Hey, Ray Del Vecchio here from WebsiteProfitCourse.com. Today's video is a WordPress tutorial for beginners. We're going to go over all the basics, which of course starts with getting your domain name and hosting. And the hosting aspect is related to the second bullet point, which is WordPress.com versus WordPress.org. So we'll dig into the difference between those. You'll see a complete tour of your admin area where you can manage your website. And throughout this video, I'm going to link up more detailed tutorials on specific topics. For those links and more, check out the description below. Right now I'm on the WordPress.com page and WordPress is software that you can install on any web server, but on WordPress.com, they do the hosting for you and these are the packages that they have available. Now the reason that I've never used WordPress.com and that I don't recommend you do either is because you don't get the full version of WordPress unless you go for their business plan, which is 25 bucks a month build yearly. So that's $300 a year in order to get the ability to use plugins, which that's kind of what makes WordPress special is that you can add functions through plugins. And we'll see that a little later in this video. So instead, what I recommend doing is what's called self-hosting. And that just means you pick any web host out there on the web. Most of them have one-click WordPress installation built in anyway, but you can download WordPress from wordpress.org. That's where you get the full software. You can download it as a zip file, or like I said, just install it on your web host through their admin area. So to quickly summarize, you want to self-host because you get to pick any web hosting company based on the performance needs that you have. So if you want to start with an affordable plan, which is what I recommend, go to HostGator.com. It's going to cost you somewhere between $50 to $100. I think it's closer to like $65 or $70 bucks for a year of hosting. And you can extend that out up to three years to lock in that intro rate. I'll include a tutorial in the description below that shows you exactly how to get set up with HostGator and install WordPress. Once you're set up with WordPress and you log in, this is the screen that you're going to see. And this is called your WordPress dashboard. This kind of gives you an overview of your entire website. And then you can navigate throughout the WordPress admin area by the menu options on the left. And you can think about WordPress broken down into three primary categories. And that's the core WordPress software. So you can see right here in this at a glance section that we're running WordPress 6.1.1. The second aspect of WordPress is themes. So you're going to pick your theme based on the design that you want, and you can swap them out to get a different design without changing your content. Right here, it's telling us that we're running the 2023 theme. And then the last aspect of WordPress are the plugins. And that's how you add theme-independent functions, such as SEO, security, social media, that kind of thing. And when any of these three areas need to be updated, either the core software, the themes, or the plugins, you can find them all from the update section here. That's why you see this red notification because one of my plugins needs to be updated and you also see that notification down here. So let's go ahead and run that update and it'll take you through this screen and hopefully you get a successfully updated message. Now I wanna talk about themes for a second because WordPress put out one of their biggest updates ever in the last year and that is adding full site editing. So that basically means that you can design your theme visually Whereas before you needed to know code to get in there and hack around with things. So to get to your themes, you can go to appearance themes. And this is the main difference. When you have a full site editing theme, you're going to see this themes button and the editor submenu, and that's it. Now I have another WordPress installation open. Let me bring that up. And this one is using one of the older themes before full site editing came out. And if I hover over the appearance menu, you can see that you have more options here. This customize section is where the theme developer would put their settings for you to customize. Like I said, now that's done visually with full site editing. If you have a theme that supports that, the same goes for all these other things, widgets, which was just content blocks that you would add into your theme. You can do that visually. Same story with menus. And FYI, I built this website using full site editing. I'll link up this complete tutorial showing you how to build this exact website that you're looking at. But for now, all you really got to know is that if you go over to appearance themes, this is where you can select a theme and activate it, make it active on your website. 2023 and 2022 both have full site editing enabled. 2021 was released a year before full site editing. So if you install and activate these, you're going to see the difference between them. And then you can pick from thousands of other themes by clicking add new up here. You can sort them by the most popular. You can find niche specific themes. If you want to use full site editing, just use this block themes filter. But I think that it's a good idea to start with the theme that WordPress developed, and that's 2023. They put out a theme every single year, and it's usually using all the newer features. And if you want to upgrade to a premium theme, there's tons of them out there as well. I use that for my client websites. But if you're just learning WordPress, I think you want to start cheap and figure out how WordPress works before you make that decision. The next two sections that we'll review are the posts and the pages. These are where you create your content on your website, and the posts are chronological. You're going to see them on the live website in the order that they're published. 
and they also have categories associated with them, whereas the pages are timeless. You use that for your about page, contact page, testimonials, that kind of thing. We can jump into one of these posts and also view it. So I'm going to open this in a new tab, and then I'll jump into the post here so you can see how you can edit it. You build your posts with the Gutenberg block editor. If you're coming back into WordPress from a hiatus of a couple of years, you might remember that they had a classic editor that kind of looked like Microsoft Word. Now everything is done with blocks. You can either click the plus button to add a block or type the slash to choose a block. And you can choose from all types of blocks. In fact, let me click the plus button and I think we can bring up a window on the side. So I'll hit that and hit browse all. And you can see all the various blocks that are available to you. Paragraph, heading, list, quote. And they also have a classic block here if you want to use that old functionality. But I recommend that you start everything using the block editor. You got media here for images, gallery, audio, and then you can organize your blocks with columns, groups, rows, stacks. You can put in separators and spacers for design. So the block editor makes it a lot easier to design your content. And then each one of these blocks has settings associated with it, and you can edit them from the right-hand side. You just got to select the block, and then you can edit the settings. So for this paragraph block, we can change the text, the background, the link color. There might be additional settings that aren't showing. So in that case, you want to click this three-dot icon. So for instance, the typography, all we see right now is the size. But but if you jump into here, you can also change the font family appearance, line height, letter spacing, etc. And then you're going to have your overall post settings. So you just got to jump over to the post tab to see those. And that's going to show you your URL. You can edit that URL if you'd like, but I don't recommend you edit this after you publish it. You can change the author, make it stick to the top of the blog, update your categories here, select from them or add new ones. You can also do tags, which are kind of like keywords. And then you have your featured image, which you can select. We're going to go into the media library right after this. And then down here, you can choose whether or not to show an excerpt on your blog page. And then you also have the discussion, which is your commenting settings. So you can create your blog post. You can save it as a draft. And then once it's done, you can publish it. You can also preview here. They give you the option to preview with a few different window sizes. So you can jump down to a tablet or a mobile size. I normally like to do it in a new tab. So it's opening kind of like it would for a new user. And let's jump into this tab over here where we have the post. Right now, the featured image is this big vertical image, which doesn't look that great on this desktop. But if we jump down here, you can see the customizations I made to the date and the categories. So if you want to see how I did that, check out the tutorial that I link in the description below. And I can also jump into one of the pages here. So I'm going to go on the live website and check the about page. You can see I selected an image with a better aspect ratio here. This was our sample page that is usually created with your WordPress installation. So it has some content in here that allows you to see how that content looks. So let's jump into this about page on the back end. We can go back here and I'm just going to exit out of here without saving. And you just go to the pages section. Here's all the content that we could edit. This is where we set our URL to about. And here's our feature and image. So you can see how this is basically the same thing as the posts. It's just you don't have the categories under the page settings. So that's a little intro on how to build your content. Now I want to talk about where your content is stored. When you do add attachments to these pages in the posts, they all get added to your media library which you can view over here. So you can either upload your media directly within pages and posts, or if you want to just bulk upload to this section, you can do it and then insert them into your pages and posts. Once you upload, you can click on an image and see the details of it. If you need to grab that direct file URL, it's right over here and you can copy it with this button. And I recommend that you make sure your dimensions are appropriate for a website. So you don't need to upload something that is 4,000 or 5,000 pixels wide. So usually I resize all my images to 1,000 pixels or less. And then once you upload them, WordPress also generates a medium size and a thumbnail size that you can insert any of those sizes. So you have to figure out that trade-off between quality and speed. Now you might also be wondering where do these files go within your web server. For that, I have a video where I go into the more technical side of how WordPress operates where you can see the PHP files that run everything versus this more practical video where I'm just talking about the admin. I'll link that up in the description below and you'll see what is known as file transfer protocol, an FTP program where I go into the web server and the hierarchy of the web files. We'll go to the next set of menu options down here and we'll start with the settings. So these are all your general WordPress settings. This is where you can set your title and tagline and then you can insert that into your template through a block. This is also where you can set your admin email address, along with the default time zone and format. The next important section is the reading section. And this is where you set either a static homepage 
or by default, WordPress is going to show your blog posts on the home page. You can select this, your home page displays option and set it to a static page. And then it'll have a drop down of all your published pages. And you can select which one to set to the home page and the post page. The discussion section is where you have all your commenting settings. The media section is where you can set your defaults on media uploads. I mentioned just a minute ago about how in the other tutorial, I go through the web server hierarchy. This option is relating to that. This is going to organize your media into folders based on the year and the month. And then arguably the most important setting here is the permalinks. This is what's going to determine your URL structure across the entire website. And I always recommend that you set it to post name as you're setting up your website. And then don't change this after you start publishing content. Otherwise, you might have links that don't work anymore. Next, we have the tool section. And the main thing this is useful for is importing and exporting. So this allows you to import blog posts if you have them on another platform here. These are the handful that they give you by default. Or you can export your current site. And this exports it as an XML file. So this isn't a full export of your entire website, including the design and all that. This is just your content. There's plugins out there that allow you to do full site backups, which are basically cloning your entire website, including the design, the layout, and the content. And the other useful feature here is the site health option. This kind of shows you the details of your web server that the website's on and whether or not you have any issues. It's going to highlight them. You can see the one that we have here is that you should remove inactive themes. And then if you go over to the info tab here, this is going to show you the specific details of your installation, whether it's WordPress. So we click the drop down here. They show you the most important things like the time zone, the home URL, permalink structure, all the stuff that we kind of went through. And then you can also see the PHP information. If we go to the server, it's going to show us our PHP version along with some of these other settings things like memory limit. Some themes use a lot of memory compared to others. You have your upload max file size. So this is all the more technical stuff that if you get set up with a web host that is used to hosting WordPress websites, they should have most of this good to go out of the box. But sometimes you'll get an error and you can always go to your web hosting support to try and get that fixed because sometimes it's just as simple as changing a PHP setting, which PHP are the scripting files that make up the entire WordPress installation along with the database. You have a MySQL database and you see those details here from the database dropdown. So this is a good way to monitor your entire WordPress installation and then if you have any errors or warnings within the status section you might want to check them out in fact i see here that a schedule event has failed sometimes something like this might be just a temporary issue so use this page to your advantage to tackle any issues before they become bigger problems then the next section up here is the user section. And one of the nice things about WordPress is that you can create users at different levels. So you might have somebody that can create blog posts, but they don't have access to some of the admin features. You can add a new user, limit their role. WordPress is also popular with memberships because there's plugins that tie in membership features and levels into the WordPress user accounts. It's a good way to outsource. So this is why WordPress is so popular compared to some of the other platforms out there that are very limited in their features. WordPress gives you so much flexibility and ways to customize. And the last section that we'll dig in here are the plugins. Basically, if you go through your theme, you try and customize, you can't figure out a way to do something, there's probably a plugin that does that thing for you. So the one example that I have on this website already installed is Contact Form 7, which is one of the most popular Contact Form plugins. So some plugins create a new menu over here. That's what happened with Contact Form 7. It creates this contact menu. And then you can go through the plugin settings to customize that plugin. Now, let me go back to the plugins page and we can click add new plugin. And this is where you're going to see the plugins that are available to you. So the two main things that I want to stress are that when you add a plugin, you should make sure that the plugin is both popular. It's got a lot of active installations. And you also want to make sure it's highly rated. Here's two good examples down here. You got BB Press, which this is a way to create a forum on your WordPress website. So if you want user generated content, a forum might be a good way to do that. You can create discussions on your site. And then this other one here is called Buddy Press. This is kind of like turning your WordPress website into a social media community. So take a look at all the plugins that are available. You can go through these tabs, the popular ones. Here's Contact Form 7. Uh, Yoast SEO is another one that I install on pretty much every website to further customize and optimize posts and pages to get them higher ranked on Google, which brings you more traffic and eyeballs. And another really popular one that you might want to check out is WooCommerce. This is how to turn your WordPress website into an e-commerce website and sell either physical or digital products. So like I said, this is what makes WordPress so unique and why you shouldn't have to pay $25 or more to get access to these plugins when you can do it yourself with self-hosting.
So if you feel more comfortable with WordPress after watching this tutorial, I suggest you just dive right in because the best way to learn is by doing it yourself. If you want to start your website right now, go to websiteprofitcourse.com slash hostgator and you can use my code WPC1 to get the best deal. In the description below, I'll link to that as well as my step-by-step -step tutorial on how to get started with Hostgator. I am an affiliate, which means if you get started using my coupon code, I get a small percentage of that, which helps me create free tutorials like this one. I became a Hostgator customer in 2009 and to this day, I still think that they're one of the best options for WordPress beginners to get set up on. And if you'd like more free WordPress training, go to the other page I have linked here, websiteprofitcourse.com slash WP101. I'll also include that in the description below. You can do it at your own pace. And I also stay in touch with my subscribers regularly. And I got a free membership on my site that organizes my best videos into different categories such as domains, hosting, WordPress, Photoshop, freelancing. Last but not least, give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. And make sure you subscribe to my channel to get all future WordPress tutorials. And if you got any specific questions, leave them in the comments below. Thanks for making it to the end. And I'll link up a couple other videos here if you want to keep on learning.